And why Sarah Palin matters, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. And I'm going to keep it very short because we have a substantial interview with the governor this evening. It took us more than a year to get Sarah Palin on the factor. The McCain people kept her away from us. So when she writes about the senator's campaign muzzling her in her new book, I know it's true. There is no question Sarah Palin is a media star who commands attention wherever she goes. In America today, that is enough for her to build on if she wants to run for president in 2012. Very simply, that's why Sarah Palin matters. She's big. She could mount a serious primary challenge. That's why the far left despises her. Mrs. Palin has the attention of the folks. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight. Sarah Palin debuts on The Factor. Let's begin this interview with a phone call you actually made to me to my house in late October 2008. We have been trying to get you on the factor for months. Do you remember that? I do. Shh. That was part of that going rogue stuff. Nobody was supposed to know about the campaign. So now you were going rogue, the calling O'Reilly at home. I don't know how you got my home number. Um, but you basically said to me, I want to do this show. But why didn't you do it? Whatever the logistics were that weren't working out, we ended up not doing the show, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, reaching out to you and to others who I believed would report fairly objectively on the campaign. Wanted to talk to you guys. We couldn't figure it out because, obviously, the factor is the biggest cable program with the most people watching. Um, we certainly were fair to you. Would you say we were fair to you? Very fair. Okay. So why couldn't we get you, and we had trouble getting Senator McCain on the program, I didn't get it. The media strategy was a bit perplexing for at least those on the vice presidential side of the ticket and not really understanding where we were going there with the relationships with the media. It was just an indication of maybe some things in our campaign being out of touch with the normal everyday average American who wanted to truly connect with, with the candidates. But I'm very glad to get to be here today. Okay, but you wanted to be on the program. You wanted to be on The Factor during the campaign. You told me you did, and I believed you. And why would you bother taking time out of your busy schedule to call me if that weren't the case? It would be fair to the electorate had we reached out and had more of a connection via different media personalities. Right. It's fair to say that you were over-controlled by the McCain people. They, they were the experts. They had run national campaigns before and of course I had never been a participant in anything larger than a state campaign. So uh, put a, obviously having to put a lot of faith in their strategy and not having a whole lot of say in things like the media rollout. Should you have said look I'm doing O'Reilly. I don't care what you say. Oh as you can tell in the book though those times that I was more assertive were the times that uh, you know we were called going rogue and then and then that being leaked to the press which was unfortunate but it, at this point of course it's water under the bridge though it, it, it is there were mistakes being made in the campaign I made mistakes in the campaign Everybody does. I acknowledge that and um, I think uh, more of a concern has been not within the campaign the mistakes that were made not being able to react to the circumstances that those uh, mistakes created in a, in a real positive and uh, professional and, and helpful way for John McCain all right, let's talk about the senator. Uh, was he accessible to you? Could you pick up the phone and get him on a phone? Absolutely. He still is, and I have great respect uh, for him. Did you him tell him, hey, I'm having trouble with some of your people? Did you tell him that? I never badmouthed any of the operatives. I had faith that Senator McCain was working with those operatives um, whoa, 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 regarding... Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. You're frustrated, and you're uh, not seeing their vision. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think you should have gone to the presidential candidate and said, hey, they're mismanaging me. you got to let me loose? Uh, not necessarily. No? Not burdening the candidate who was out there every day putting it on the line for voters to understand what it was that our ticket had to offer. Not wanting to burden so him with the internal operatives. Absolutely not. I See, didn't I would have done to. that. Well, again, hindsight. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, it, I think it was obvious to, to everyone within the campaign that things weren't quite going well. You guys could have won the election, I think, well, looking, looking from a, look, the press was against you. We all know that. Uh, Bush had a lot of trouble, and that hurt the Republican ticket. We all know that. But it was close. John McCain, did he ever scold you, by the way, to, after no. the Keurig interview and the Gibson interview? Did he call you and say, hey, Sarah, you got to... You got to elevate your game. John McCain was nothing but positive, encouraging, and supportive. So you never had any contention between you. Not an ounce of contention. All right. No. The two signature moments that got you in trouble, with all due respect, Governor, 
or the Gibson interview when he looked down at you with his nose on, on the glasses on the nose and said, Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? When I heard that, I went, what Bush doctrine? Everybody said, so did I. In what respect, Charlie? The Bush, well, what, do you, what do you interpret it to be? His worldview. No, the Bush doctrine enunciated in September 2002, before the Iraq war. Do you think that Gibson did that to demean you, to make you look stupid? Those are the gotcha techniques that some in the, what some people call mainstream, others call the, now the lamestream media, want to participate in a, a tactic like that. But that, he's it not was just like a gotcha. that. Gibson's not like that. Had he explained a little bit more the context of the question that he was asking, probably could have answered it. Now that was a signature moment there. And it hurt Gibson because a lot of women said, that's not fair. Katie Couric's different story. Now, Katie Couric asked you an easy question, and you booted it, Governor. I sure did. What newspapers and magazines did you regularly read before you were tapped for this to stay informed and to understand the I've world? read most of them, again, with a great appreciation for the press, for the media. But like, what I mean, specifically? I'm curious that you... Um, all of them. Why did you boot it? I mean, if somebody asks, what do you read? I say, I read the you know, New York Times or Wall Street Journal, Washington Post. I can, I can reel them off in my sleep. You couldn't do it. Well, of course I could. Of course I could. Well, it's it's ridiculous to suggest that or to say that I couldn't tell people what I read. Because by that point already, though it was relatively early in that multi-segmented interview with Katie Couric, it was, it was quite obvious that it was going to be a bit of um, an annoying interview with a badgering of the questions. It seemed to me that she didn't know anything about Alaska, about my job as governor, about my accomplishments as, as a mayor or a governor, uh, my record. And a question like that, though, yeah, I booted it, I screwed up, I should have been more patient and more gracious in my answer. It seemed to me that the question was more along the lines of, do you read? How do so you stay you in touch with the real world? So that was your inexperience that led to that exchange with Cork. You were frustrated. It was up, you my inexperience in having to deal with a badgering, condescending line right. of questioning. It, it had no, no reflection at all on my inexperience in terms of administrative record or accomplishments no, it's just or handling the media. vision for America. Yeah, and you know what? So what? So I wasn't. Um, it hurt you though. So I wasn't doing the right thing to ingratiate myself with with liberal media personalities to make them like me. So what? I think if most normal Americans were put in the same position that I was there, they'd probably look at her and have that proverbial eye roll and say, "Are you kidding if me? They knew, Are you suggesting that I known. don't read?" That led, in my opinion, to the McCain people, Steve Schmidt, the other guys saying, you know, we can't trust her out there because she, she booted that. And that's where you lost credibility among them. I understand what you're saying. Uh, although Katie Cork and I spoke to her uh, a couple of days ago, says she wasn't out to get you. Clearly in your book, you feel that Katie Cork was out to I get you. I let the transcript speak for itself and readers will decide for themselves if she had any kind of bias or non-objective yeah, mission there. you think she was out to get you. It's different than Gibson. I think that she was out to get if you will, anyone who didn't believe in, in, in her perspective. It's not like she was going to get in there and be, I think, unbiased, objective, and fair. Interesting. But, but it is my bad. It is my mistake, and it was my inexperience in dealing with the media elite in my response, a very annoyed response to a very annoying question. You're bad. Well, it's my bad. My mistake. <laughs> I was in uh, Minneapolis, as you probably know, uh, watching your speech when you were nominated. It was a, you know, you obviously lights out speech. Now they say the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull, lipstick. Did you know after you gave that speech that the media was going to hammer you? Did you have any idea that they were going to come after you the way they have? You know what I thought they were going to come after me for? Getting a D in a college course 22 years ago, that was the big controversy in my little world. That was the, con that was the skeleton in my closet that I had, like, crap. So once you didn't, you once didn't the media know. finds that out, then it's going right. to be a, a... So you a, didn't know they were going to come after you? No, and neither did the campaign. Had the campaign known, then they would have had, um, practically speaking, things like a binder full of information about me. Can I say something bold and fresh? Please. You should have known. You are a pro-life woman a pro-gun woman. 
you didn't think the elite media in New York and D.C. was going to put a target on your forehead? 